Hey everyone, and welcome back to Build UX. In this episode, we're continuing work on the Nutrition UI design. We're gonna take a step back and make sure we have everything we need in terms of designs before we begin styling our project. After that, we're gonna finalize our HTML so everything is accounted for, and then we'll be ready to dive into CSS. It's important to have patience with a project and keep asking yourself if you're well prepared for the next step. Even though we really did thorough design discovery and got our initial HTML drafted, it started becoming clear that we didn't have a great plan for the more stateful components of our UI, and we had no mockups to guide us through the responsive design for the page we're building. So I've taken some time to supplement the original designs that Giga Tamarashvili created. And the first thing I did was tackle the design of the search in the global header here. So you can see that we've added an open state for this global search. And here's the placeholder text, as well as kind of the in inactive input for the search. And if we open up our layers here real quick, you can see that we also tackled an active state for the search as well. So we introduced a new color to our palette. This is another need that we discovered by supplementing these designs, thinking through all the statefulness of the components. And then we have this new slate blue color that we'll use for all of our focus states throughout the app. You can also see we have kind of an active input, so we can just kind of envision what that looks like. So in addition to creating a design for the open state of the global search in the header, we also created a design for the open menu as well. So let's take a look at what we have here. So you can see that now we have a menu that appears from the right edge when it's open. We have a nice overlay, and this will also be a tap target for closing the menu, as well as providing a dedicated button for the close action itself. And so we weren't redundant in our navigation. We didn't include any of the top nav links for the desktop version of this menu, and instead just came up with some maybe global pages that would be helpful in this menu for desktop. We also repeated the social media icon component that we have in our article sharing section, but this one would be more for connecting with the nutrition brand as a whole. Now, another thing that was completely unaccounted for in terms of design was the mobile experience for this website. And this started becoming really clear that we would need to think through how this website would look on a mobile experience. The ideal kind of workflow for building out UI and to create a really robust user experience is to really have a mobile first mentality. But when your design discovery doesn't provide those, sometimes it's worth recreating the design from scratch and really thinking through how everything is going to lay out regardless of viewport size. So with the mobile experience, you can see that we got rid of the global links. Those will be shown in the menu's open state. And our article is pretty much collapsed down to a single column experience with a little bit of overlap on the supplemental images just to give some interest there. You can also see that our section selector, instead of being vertically oriented with the previous and next section controls, is now a horizontal experience. And this could be swipeable. And it also is going to appear before the related articles, just so it's contextually tied to the section of the article that we're viewing. Now to correspond with the desktop designs, I added an open state for the global search, as well as an open state for the global menu. Now you can see in the open state for the mobile menu, we've included the top navigation links that we're no longer showing on the top bar by default. And that's because we don't have enough room for them. So instead we just include them next to our global content pages and everything else about this experience is pretty comparable to the desktop version. So with all that in mind, it's now a good time to revisit our HTML code that we completed in the last episode and make sure that we have all of our details accounted for, everything is finalized before we dive into styling our app with CSS. Now, as we move back into our code editor here, let's use the live server extension to open up our index.html page and get a live preview that will reload as we make any changes. Now, the first thing, and I'm sure a lot of you caught this about the last episode is even though we added the code for our images, we actually had a mistake in our source attribute here. So the images never appeared on the page. So all we need to do in the case of these images is just add a period before the first directory for the assets folder. And if we give that a save, hey, we have our images now, everything's looking good. Now, the next thing that we could add at this stage is really important for accessibility. And it's something that I add to all of my website projects, but I often forget to do it at this stage where we're just coding out HTML. But since we're here now, let's go ahead and add a skip to main content link. And this will allow screen reader users or keyboard navigation users to immediately move to the main content area instead of having to go through the global navigation. 
So you can imagine if you were having to tab through the experience on the website manually each time, you would have to move through all of the links and buttons in the global header before you can arrive to the main content. But if you're familiar with the website and you're just looking at a specific article on a page and you just want to get straight into the content, a skip nav link can help them jump into that content without having to go through the global navigation again. So we'll just add an anchor tag with an ID of main content. And then inside of this, it's common convention to just say skip to main content. Now by default, this link is hidden. And if we give it a save, we'll see that it's visually shown for now until we add CSS. But typically once it receives tab focus, you would animate it or bring it into view. And then that would allow the user to immediately engage with it and jump right into the main article content or whatever it is within the main tag of your page. Now, in order to wire up this anchor tag, we actually have to give our main element an ID of main content to match. And then this would function as expected. So if we were to click on this anchor, you can see that it does navigate to the main content ID. In this case, because all of our content fits on a single page or within the viewport, I should say, there's no scrolling that would go on, but the browser would automatically have brought us right to the top of this main content. Now, the next thing we can do is finalize some of the details we now know about our global search. So if we take a look back at our design here and find the open state of our search. Let's make sure that we're looking at the empty variation of our search real quick. So let me just toggle off this active state. And if we take a look, we are providing some helpful placeholder text for the user. So let's go ahead and get that added as an attribute to our input here. So let's say placeholder, let's say avocados, turmeric, kale, etc. And that'll just be helpful and should appear for users if we look at our live preview here, to give them an idea of what type of search terms might return useful results. I think that does it for now in terms of finalizing HTML for our global search because we had most of it completed in the last episode. But now let's turn our attention over to this global menu. So this global menu, as we saw with the mobile designs, will actually include all of the links that are found in the top navigation. And what we're going to do is for desktop, we will show these links, but we won't show them in the menu. And then conversely, on mobile, we have to hide all of these links that are shown in the center of the page and bring them into our menu itself. Right now, we just have the nav links and the trigger button for the menu. So what we need to add now is an unordered list, and these will contain the additional links that we'll need for our menu to be complete. So since we're just looking at the desktop variation of this, let's quickly move over to the mobile version just to see what our max use case is here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight links that we'll need. So let me actually just back this up and use Emmet to quickly create eight links. And these links will all have anchor tags inside. And if we expand that out, that should save us a ton of time adding those. And if we use Control D to select similar strings, then we can get multi cursor selection going. Let's expand these out just to have nice formatting so we can add content within the anchor tags easily. Now, as I mentioned, the first four links within the menu are actually going to be exactly the same as what's on top in our global nav. So we can actually copy these out individually and put them into the first four list items we have here. So I'll use Alt to get multi cursor selection going. We'll move to the end of the line give those a copy and then using control D I'll select the first four and give those a paste and that looks good. Now let's make sure we have our remaining links accounted for. So we'll have our about section with corresponding text for the link. Next up, we have a submissions page with matching text and then a careers page as well. And let's get that careers text in there. And actually, the eighth link is our home link. So let me just hold Alt and the arrow keys to move this up. And then this is where our home link will go up top. Great. OK, so next up in our menu, we also need to account for the close button and this connect with social media icons section as well. So at this point, it's probably helpful to wrap the menu in a div just to semantically kind of separate things out. We're going to avoid 
again, introducing any unnecessary HTML elements at this point that are just for styling. But here it's actually helpful because we're carving out a group of elements that we know we want to be cordoned off in their own area in the DOM. So this button within the menu should say close menu and we can visually hide the close word in there and replace it with a visual only something that's hidden from screen readers close icon is needed. And then after this unordered list, we can reference our share section code real quick and bring that up into the menu as well. And one thing I'd like to do while we're down here is just clarify this a little bit and say share this article just so there's a little more natural language specific to what we expect to do. And then these links should probably say share on Facebook and share on Twitter. And that'll just add a little more clarity to what's going on. But let's copy out the links that we'll need. We can modify them as needed. Bring those up into our menu. And here in our menu, we probably don't need to make connect a heading in this case because it's just part of links and other calls to action and the context of the menu is already there. So we can just put connect in a paragraph tag and that should be fine for now. And again, visual styling that happens to be the same in our designs doesn't necessarily mean we'll always use the same HTML to achieve that. So it's important to always separate out semantics from visual styles, especially in cases like this where share really needs to serve as a section heading. In the case of our menu though, it's really just a label for some links that the user is already going to be moving through a list of links in the menu, so the context is already clear there. So let's paste in our two links that we copied over. And then we don't need the share on text for these two since we already said connect up here. It's a little bit different use case. Give that a save. Make sure everything's looking good. Now we have our full menu being shown, so we'd have a close menu button, the links within that, and our connect section. Okay, great. And so now just a couple additional considerations. If we look at our designs, we know that visually we have kind of three major groupings for the global header. So we have our brand on the left, the search and navigation links together, and then our menu button, as well as the off-screen menu that will show on the right side here. But semantically, really, these navigation links and everything inside the menu could be considered navigation. So even though it might create some interesting styling considerations in terms of separating these groups out, you know, centering the navigation links with the search, it probably is best to actually bring this closing nav tag to surround all of our menu content as well. And with that, I think we have everything we need accounted for in order to build this out successfully. So now, finally, we can get into the styling stage and start having fun with CSS. So in the next episode, we'll dive into CSS, get our reset styles established, bring any of the design system elements such as variables, fonts, type specs, consistent spacing values, all of those things ready to go. And then we'll have a great foundation to begin our component by component build out of the actual UI. So check out the next episode and we'll dive right into styles.